Bob here, and welcome to episode 29 of World's End Club Blind. Last time, we made through a weird underground pagoda level with the aid of Genu's upside down reversing gravity powers. And now we're going to move on to the story because we escaped the underground area and we are moving on. Oh, we also learned that apparently Genu knows Neon. And at first I thought that... Okay, let's just see what the first how line... How do you feel, Chuko? Okay, anyways, as I was saying, Genu was saying how she knew Neon. And then Neon responded how... And I thought that Neon was basically saying about how Genu was his love interest, which was kind of creeping me out a little. I thought, oh my gosh, are we getting another Haiji Toa incident? But then I realized upon looking at the last episode, I was looking through and Neon said, the love of my life's little. So basically it could just be that Genu was another sister. Genu could have a single mom, could have a mom that was dating, that was dating Neon, basically. It just... It could be a lot of different things. So as such, I, I think that Neon is higher tier than Haiji Toa. Though then again, that's not exactly the highest bar that you have that you have to exceed. I feel totally fine now. Yeah, now look how we don't have to fight any giant mechanical crabs to get these antibodies, just Neon to the rescue. Thanks to you guys getting the antibiotics for me. Genu, Yuki, Rachel, thank you so much. Yeah, and then the others, they're just nothing. To thank us. Chuko, you sure you're okay? I said I'm fine already. I drank the lifeguard that Tatsun gave me. My HP is full. I love how just lifeguard, no matter what future we take, lifeguard is always there. I found it at the vending machine nearby. Chuko said she was thirsty. So anyway. You want to get going? What, what, no elaborate lifeguard ad about how it's the thirst quencher? Huh? Go where? Come on, Pi, we're heading to Tokyo. I mean, we asked a bunch of people underground, but no one told us how Tokyo is doing. They just said the people above ground all died. But that's only if poison chemicals are raining onto Earth, right? And obviously, that's just nonsense. I mean, look at us. We're alive, aren't we? So then the people in Tokyo... Don't worry. I'm sure they're fine. Yeah, but just... I, I like the, the whole choice aspect. I really do like that part. But on the other hand, I can't help but feel that it's a bit empty, you know? Where we have to go back and make the other choice anyways. So I guess our next goal is going to be Nagoya. If we go straight east from here, we'll hit Nagoya. Hooray! Chicken wings, miso katsu, black noodles, tempura rice balls, and eel balls! Jeez, Mocha! Everything is with you is food! <laughs> and then we just get the Aniki edgy back turn, because Aniki's not Aniki has no time for laughter. How can he laugh when there is no sunshine in his life? Only dark storm clouds and a moody acoustic guitar. All right, let's get moving. Next stop, Nagoya. Go Getters Club. Hey, hey, oh! So, which way is east? Really? You don't know the basic I'll east-west? Just look in the direction the sun is not setting. This game console has a compass function. <laughs> yes, your Racho controller. Racho has a compass built into him. Got it. Lead the way, Pochi. No prob. So Racho doesn't get to become a leader of men and women in this line. Hey! that looks like you'd find it out in the boonies. This is Kiyomizu Temple. This place is a national treasure and world heritage site, so it's very well known. Since it was on our way, I felt like stopping by. You felt like it. <laughs> yeah, is it you could feel, Pochi, you and your cold robotic circuits. 
So what did you guys think about what Neon was saying? What do you mean? He said, Humanity no longer feels anger or sorrow. There's no hatred, jealousy, or fear, so it's a paradise. Oh, come on! That's just crazy! Yeah, the people living underground didn't seem too happy either. Negative and positive emotions go hand in hand. If you lose anger and sorrow, you lose happiness and joy. Too. Really, this is our turn to dang and rompa moment. Just replace anger and sorrow with despair and happiness and joy with hope, and you're basically getting a dang and rompa game That's at this point. What hell really is. If I can't eat good foods and be happy, I'd rather die. Yeah, the word for paradise in Japanese starts with the Chinese character for fun. So if it's not fun, it can't be paradise. Nah, you're wrong. A world without sadness is perfect. Oh, but, Niki. but really, with how edgy you've been, Aniki, just with how much gloom and doom you've been, you would have thought that sadness would start turning to your happiness. I agree. What? Not you too, Jinu. You guys all know, right? I lost someone precious to me. Yes, Jenny, we are very much aware of your little sister. My older sister. I thought you, I thought it was I thought it was younger sister. Ah, so basically Neon was dating her older sister. I, I thought the sister was younger. I could have sworn that Jenny said little sister. She was everything to me. She taught me all about the joy and beauty of life. I always looked up to her and wanted to be just like her. Uh, can I can I move on? Good, good. There we are. The reason I love Hoseki Zuka Theater is because of her. One day she told me, I'll show you the most beautiful thing in the world. She sat me down in front of the TV. And she showed me the Hoseki Zuka Theater. My sister was just glowing. And in that moment, I felt my own heart catch fire. And it wasn't just because of the Hoseki Zuka video. It was seeing the heaven written all over my sister's face as she watched. This sister I looked up to so much. What was it she was seeing? I wanted to know the answer to that. I thought if I learned that, I could be more like my sister. That's how I got sucked into the world of Hoseki Zuka. My passion for Hoseki Zuka is directly related to my feelings for my sister. But my sister's not with us anymore. Those earthquakes that have been happening. It was one of those that killed my sister. I thought it was Neon. And it happened right here in Kyoto. At the time, my sister was engaged to a guy living in Kyoto. One day, he told her he wanted her to come and visit. He said they'd look for a house together for after they were married. Yes, how dare Neon plan for the future? How dare Neon want to look for homes? And that's why she went to Kyoto, where the earthquake killed her. Yes, because Neon can predict the future. Neon knew the earthquake was coming. Wait, the man she was engaged to, was it? Exactly. The guy you met earlier. Neon. <gasps> I've met him a bunch of times. I used to tag along with Sis when they went on dates. He took us lots of places. I looked up to him too. He was the man my sister loved. So naturally, I liked him. But that's not how I feel now. If he hadn't asked my sister to come to Kyoto, she'd still be alive. You could even say, he killed her. He killed her with real estate. That's why I hate him now. With 
all my heart. And do those thoughts of hatred now extend to the real estate market? But a grudge is a heavy thing to carry. I really tried to let it go. Over and over. But I just couldn't do it. I can't cleanse my heart of the loathing I feel. Are you really being honest? Huh? Aren't you just running away from your grief, Jenny? Yeah, that moment when the robot has a better grasp of emotion than you. The grief that's eating away at you. Crushing your heart. This grudge against him. It lets you turn away from that grief. No! You're wrong! Yeah, you know, Pochi may be an, a glorified Roomba, but he's our glorified Roomba. He's a good guy. He's a good character. He's a good guy. Then why did you protect him? Yuki told me all about it. Yeah, just so she could kill him later. Herself. You saved his life underground, right? If you really hated him so much, you wouldn't have done that. The grief of losing someone is kind of like a knock. A knock? Yeah. A sign from the deceased. It's their way of saying, I'm here. Listen to me. The door is the tenderest place in your heart. It's fragile and easily damaged. So is that how you feel, Pochi, every time you have to throw out a broken toaster? You see one of the members of the group throwing out the broken toaster or a broken vacuum cleaner? So, if someone knocks there, it's really painful. But you can't ignore that knock. You can't pretend not to notice it. I mean, think how bad they must feel. The one knocking on that door, they don't want to be forgotten. <laughs> Go ahead and cry if you feel like it. Just let it all out. Just don't get poachy what he may short out. Tears are proof that your sister was alive. And that she's still alive. Inside your heart. <laughs> My sister. I loved her so much. Is this really the right way? I'm sure of it. We're going straight east like the compass says. N Neon? Yeah, Neon's returning. What are you doing here? I wanted to say sorry. Yeah, well, Neon's officially rid of the nano machines. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm really sorry. It's fine. After all, you were the one that found the antibiotics. I'm super grateful. Uh. What's your problem, Kanzai? Still not convinced? He lost his emotions because of Mike. It wasn't his fault. Yeah, but... Um... Neon... We found a flyer back in Kobe. Does it have something to do with Mike? Yeah. Mike used the monitor drones to drop those things everywhere. It's to lure people still living above ground to come to Kyoto's underground. Why is it trying to lure them underground? I'm not sure either, but I think it's got something to do with sunlight. Sunlight? When you get exposed to sunlight, your emotions come back. That's why Mike is trapping humans underground. So, the thing about the poisonous air is... Of course, it's a lie. Mike has been spreading lies to keep people underground. Angry Rachel. that's why I still had some emotions left. What do you mean? 
there's a certain place I used to visit from time to time. So I was exposed to sunlight more than the others. But it's forbidden to go outside for us undergrounders. So I would have been in big trouble if I'd been caught. That's why I ran when you first saw me. I didn't realize you guys were the ones following me at the time. But what did you keep going above ground for? I told you, didn't I? To get to a... certain place. A certain place? Well... Mm. Uh. It's where... where my love lies sleeping. <gasps> the underground exit. Comes out near Nanzenji Temple, where her grave is. I sneak out to visit her whenever I can. After all, it's my fault she died. Because I asked her to come to Kyoto. Mm. It used to be when I thought of her, it felt like my heart was being ripped out of my chest. It hurt so much, I could barely even breathe. But then Mike took the pain away. That's why you called it a paradise, huh? Yeah. Huh? Wait, don't you find that odd? Find what odd? You used to go above ground to visit her grave. And because you were exposed to sunlight, you kept some of your emotions, right? Yes, though, it's kind of odd because the way Mike was wording it, it seemed as though... it. Sounded as if though they went above ground, just they got the sunlight. Boom! The nail bots were gone. Period. Yeah. That means when you first visited the grave, you should have had no emotions. It makes sense, right? You wouldn't have been exposed to sunlight yet. So then, why did you want to visit her grave? I. I heard a voice. A voice. I think it's an otherworlder. That thing spoke directly into my brain. W wait a minute. An otherworlder? Another worder? No, I said an otherworlder. I'm talking about people that live in another world. Huh? Of course, I knew you guys weren't going to believe me. But it's the truth. <laughs> and then basically, Neon got voices for all the other worlders. So, hey, Neon, uh, you mind giving me some pointers on how to get Miss Sonia? I listened to that voice and went to the grave. Visit that grave, Neon, and also give me some pointers of how to pick up Miss Sonia. Gundam's been ruining my game. He's been third wheeling me, and I need help. But maybe that was Mike's voice. Nope, that can't be. Mike and the Otherworlder are enemies. The Otherworlder is trying to defeat Mike. How do you know? It's what the Otherworlder told me. But it also told me they can't beat Mike on their own. It lives in another world, so it can't come here itself. There's just one thing it can do, and that's communicate with X-types. X-types? People of this world with powers that let the Otherworlders communicate with them. So you're one of the X-types then? No, I'm not an X-type. I'm just like a receiver. It's a one-way ability. Not the same as the X-types who can send and receive. And I heard the X-types are... immortal. Immortal? Yeah, no matter what they do, X-types don't die. That's why the Otherworlder wants to use their powers to defeat Mike. <laughs> this has to be the silliest nonsense I ever heard. But I'll play along, okay? So where are these X-types? <sighs> I don't know. You don't know? But there is one clue. X-types have an X on their forehead? So, are these organic people or robots like... Or robots like Pochi? That's what the Otherworlder told me. Back then, my emotions were still hazy. But I told myself, I can't forget this. And I wrote it down. 
so I'll give it to you. Here. You guys are gonna continue your journey, right? Then you may bump into some X-types. Scrap of paper, X-type. Okay, I think this may be a key item. What are you going to do? I'm gonna find a way to get the people to come up above ground. But if I mess up, I might get hurt bad, or worse. Don't say that! It'll be fine. This is my own personal mission. I got lots of friends underground. I can't abandon them. No matter what happens, I gotta do what I can to save them. <sighs> Neon! Neon! I'm so glad you're really back! Huh? I mean, the Neon I know is finally back! Oh, yeah. Sorry for worrying you, kid. Yes, Kansai's, Kansai's cult around Neon has been restored! <laughs> Still wearing that leader badge I gave you, huh? Y yeah. Is this when Rachel's gonna get in this timeline? But. Hey, why are you taking it off? Seeing you again, I feel embarrassed. Yeah, here. Pochi's gonna get it now. I'm not the true leader you wanted me to be. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I give up. On the day I'm gonna earn the right to wear this badge with pride, I plan on coming back here so you can see for yourself. Okay then, I'm looking forward to it. I just want to know one final thing. How does your chest feel now? <sighs> it hurts. It still feels like a hot knife stabbing deep into my heart. But I'm gonna keep that pain right here close to me. And live with it. Yeah, for a sec- good, good. For a second though, I thought Neon and Aniki were gonna engage in a, du in a duel of edge. Aniki's gonna basically go on. You think you have it bad? Well, pull up a seat, because I've got some edgy poetry. S the sun is dark as my soul. For now, and forever. <sighs> Thank you. Hearing you say that makes me feel better somehow. Okay, you guys. Be good. Okay, did we get the path we needed? Oh, here it is, the Hello Pain. We might as well do the next campsite, just to see what's going on there. Get this campsite done, and then end the episode off. Okay, talk to everyone. Pochi talking to Pochi. Supposedly, a brilliant Japanese scientist created Mike. That's what Neon said, right? I didn't know someone capable of that existed in Japan. Mm. Do you think that person knows how to stop Mike? The earthquakes that have been happening these past few years, Genu lost someone special because of it. Without any... Warning. Because of an earthquake weapon? Some say it was an experiment. Hmm. Oh! That big X in the sky. What was it called? Parthenon? You mean Panopticon? Yes, the Parthenon! Hallucination? It actually exists, right? Yeah. Supposedly, it's invisible because Mike camouflaged it. So that... Panacotta thing? The Panopticon. Ugh. It's so hard 
to save. Man, couldn't it have had a better name? Couldn't you have had a better mind, Squishy? Panopticon means Omnipotent Monitoring System. Normally, it refers to a design of a jail. It's got surveillance towers with guards surrounding the cells to watch them. That way, the guards can keep watch over all the cells. Uh... I don't really get it. But what does that have to do with the X? Well, because this area is a one big prison for Mike. I think it's because it's similar to what the X functions as. It's also a device Mike made to keep watch over the yeah, whole exactly. world. Ah, I see. That's why the pony copter. Panopticon. Pony's just going to have a meltdown. He's going to start sparking. Rachel, he's going to join in on this action. So I guess this whole world is a jail watched over by Mike, huh? That's horrible. Actually, it makes me feel a little relieved. Huh? Why is that? It's proof that things exist, even if you can't see them. Right? Vanilla does exist. Right. I haven't seen Vanilla in a while. I wonder where she is. Every time I see a bonfire, I can't help but remember Vanilla. Remember how she loved to roast marshmallows? And then... Uh, now that I think of it, during the fate game, Vanilla's task was to eat marshmallows, right? A marshmallow. Hmm? Fate game? Fate game. Vanilla. Yeah, I love how Pi just at this point in the story is just, she's coming to the conclusion of Vanilla being the mastermind. Uh, Unless this is where the cutscene happens. I, I don't remember. Yeah, good thing I didn't get this path earlier. Otherwise, I would have freaked out even sooner. Thanks to Neon, we know lots of things. The Undergrounders were acting strange because Mike stole their emotions with nanomachines. Nanomachines, huh? That's horrible. Rachel, do you know about nanomachines? They give, they give politicians the strength to punch cyborgs into the air? They're incredibly tiny machines. That bestow that allow for politicians to do, do feats of incredible strength and to stage socioeconomic revolutions. Do you know how small they are? They're minus one by ten to the ninth meter small. Smaller than a cell. The size of an atom. That small. And you can't see them. Or tell if they enter your body. Unless they form a metal coating around someone's fist and they punch you in the jaw with it. In other words, they're like a virus. The people invaded by Mike's nano machines, they lose their emotions as if a virus is eating away at them. But my question is this, if Mike's so advanced, why doesn't he just, why doesn't it just come up with the idea of, hey, why don't I just hijack their minds outright, you know? And the undergrounders are the results of that. That's horrific. Everyone gets two conversations. Neon said the undergrounders will get their emotions back if they get exposed to sunlight. I wonder what that's all about. Maybe the sun's ray kills the nanomachines in the brain. Maybe Mike's nanomachines are vulnerable to UV light. Kind of like vampires. Yeah, we'll just get a tan we'll get a tanning bed and we'll just nuke them with it. Nuke or, them with the UV rays. By feeling the sun. Maybe the immune system gets activated and the nano machines get purged from the body. Vitamin D, vitamin D, the most powerful of all the vitamins. Yeah, just the power of milk. Just pour a giant ga a tanker of milk down there. That'll cure them. Hmm. In either case, 
It seems like neither Mike or its nano machines are invincible. Really, just we can defeat Mike. Just send it PC Optimizer Pro. PC Optimizer Pro will just devastate Mike's circuits. You remember I voted to go to Osaka, right? It wasn't because I wanted to go to Osaka. It was because I didn't want to go to Kyoto. Like I told you before, I lost my sister here. Usually, I don't think about her when I'm with you guys. Okay, but why does Jenu look really bright? Is it because of the fire or my game? I don't know. No, no, it's, it's the fire. It's the fire. Okay, good. But when I see Kyoto, I remember. And it's so painful. But now I'm glad I came. I was finally able to grieve for her properly. I was finally able to face her death and let it go. How was Neon able to regain his emotions? I've been thinking about how it happened. Was it because he was exposed to sunlight? No, that's not it. Neon's emotions returned underground. No, it was the other worlder. Huh. So do you think this could be it? When I first saw Neon, he pretended not to remember me. He was afraid that, by talking with me, his own grief would overwhelm him. Of course, fear is a form of emotion. So, Neon did have some emotions left. And he instinctively threw up a wall around his heart to avoid the grief. But when I saved him, his wall came crumbling down. All the stored up emotions came bursting out again. Well, at least that's my theory. Then it could have also been the near-death situation. So it looks like Jenu has superpowers too. Rachel, where do you think these powers are coming from? A hidden power that's inside people? Evolving in response to danger? Or a side effect of the nanomachines Mike spread around? Hmm. Huh? You think I'll get them next? No, no way. Yes, Pochi's already looking to the timeline. I'm sure I don't have any special powers. But if I could have a power... Hmm. Yeah. So Vanilla's ghost wanted to go to Osaka, right? Yeah, but really, I like how in that one, that one dialogue... Tatsu was thinking to himself, hmm, if I had a power, then maybe my inner school shooter vibes can come out. Really, just seeing that sprite, though, when Tatsu is just pushing his glasses up. He's like that one kid who basically is telling his friends, don't come to school tomorrow. Oh, I'm not saying I believe it yet, okay? But, but if she did exist... I'm not afraid of ghosts. Yeah, but you can't eat a Mochan. Anyway, I wonder what Vanilla needed to do in Osaka. Oh, I know. I bet she wanted to eat all the food. No, Mochan, you're getting her mixed up with you. She wanted to eat something before she died. If it were me, I would turn into a ghost just to eat some. I'm so jealous. I wish I'd gone to Osaka, too. All we got to eat here was boil in the bag curry. If we'd gone to Osaka, we could have had takoyaki and okonomiyaki. The monitor drones. Yes, the, the monitor drones. He said we can't see them, but they're flying everywhere. That means there are some around here watching us. I don't like it. 
It makes me nervous being watched like this. Yeah, and then just the thoughts of using the bathroom. Those things are watching you use the bathroom. And what are they supposed to be doing for us anyway? Allowing Mike to watch you use the bathroom. It may be some kind of super AI, but all it's doing is watching? Protecting people? What a lie. It anal they then analyze your if fecal matter. True, how come it didn't protect her? Let me ask you again. Are you sure you saw Vanilla's ghost? I mean, a ghost? It must be a joke. Yeah, and I love how just it was revealed later on that these really are just one-sided conversations. Rachel is not talking. It's not just the typical silent protagonist. Oh, they're silent to the player, but the ca but the NBC they're talking to understands them perfectly and is hearing exactly what they're saying. Yeah, well, I still can't believe it. If you think logically, ghosts just can't exist. Yeah, if everyone became a ghost after they died, the whole place would be swimming with ghosts. It's just hard to believe in ghosts at this age. And even if they did perhaps exist, we can't touch them or see them, so there's no reason to think that they exist. But with that logic, you can't prove they don't exist either. Yeah, I like how we're having a repeat of this dialogue. Can't prove a negative, huh? Okay, let's put it this way. It's extremely unlikely they exist. But Rachel, you guys saw Vanilla's ghost, right? Hey, you believe them, Tatsun? Hmm. Well, to be honest, I half believe it, half don't. Even in Electro Rangers, they left it kind of ambiguous as to whether ghosts exist. I bet you anything they were just hallucinating. Because they miss Vanilla so much. So are you saying you don't miss her then, Chuko? Mm. Of course I do. If I could see her again, I'd love to. W well, I feel that way too, but... Of course. We all feel the same way. Vanilla was our friend, after all. But that's different from whether we believe in ghosts or not. I can't lie to myself and say that I believe. Well, I haven't seen her, so I can't just believe it that easy either. Unless Electro Rangers confirms the existence of ghosts, in which case you'll believe it hands down, no argument. Mike wiped out emotions for world peace, right? But I don't know. If you don't have emotions, is that really peace? <laughs> You're so stupid. A dweeb like you should know at least. What did you say to me? There, you see? That's you all over, Kansai. You're all about emotions and gut instincts. It's why you're always screwing stuff up. Da 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 I don't feel emotions cause they always bring me nothing but pain. Jealous of Rachel, annoyed at Mocha, mad at me, snapping at Chuko, having having a big crush on Chuko. You can't control your emotions, so you're always making trouble, right? <sighs> emotions do cause conflict, and that's why Mike stole them. Well, you got a point. Aniki, you're right. My personality is always getting me into fights. But since we came to Kyoto, I finally understand. Without emotions, mankind might as well be dead. Without jealousy, you can't grow. And without sadness, you can't be nice. Without anger, you can't even point out other people's mistakes. And without anger, Kansai, you can't beat in, a, in the opposing team's car when they beat you. Aniki, you got mad before, so you straightened me out, right? I would say irritated is more the proper term. 
I appreciate it. Seriously, thanks. But Aniki, you gotta fix your own bad attitude or people are gonna hate you. I'm not gonna lie. You really ticked me off. Huh. I guess I shouldn't have said anything. More Kansai! X-Type. Huh. But I just want to really apologize if I come off as a bit quiet during several of the conversations. Just, if I don't really have anything to say, I don't really want to talk, you know? Because I'm not just going to talk for the sake of talking, you know? I was thinking about what Neon said. X-Types have an X on their forehead. I still don't get this whole mic thing or this X-Type thing. And I only half believe Neon. After all, that was a lot to suddenly dump on us. But the phrase X-Types have an X on their forehead is kind of bugging me. It sounds cool. Kind of like a hero in a comic book. Hey, Rachel, do you see an X on my forehead? Just really bright yellow eyebrows. No, huh? Yeah, but what about Yuki? We haven't seen her forehead. Mr. Rachel, I told you underground I was a fan of the Jose Kizuka Theater, right? Miss Janu and I bonded over it earlier. Yeah, I never knew you were a Fuki Yamami fan, Yuki. I mean, Yamami is the top actress for playing the men's roles. Yes, well I didn't think you'd be a Risa Hamafuna fan either. Hamafuna is the top actress for the lady roles. Of course, there are a few actors for the male roles I love too. But Hamafuna is so elegant and beautiful. She's so charming. Her voice is so wonderful. It makes my heart tremble. Yeah, really? Really, Kansai? You want to... Are you sure about dating Yuki? Because you date Yuki, you're eating her horrible cooking, and she's dragging you to all those theater shows. Exactly. You're amazing, Yuki. You really get it. <laughs> Seriously, nothing makes me happier than this. I never thought I'd find someone at the Go-Getters Club I can talk about Hoseki Zuka to. I wish we could have more people join us. Hey, I, I think we could we could put a disk contain a data disk contain some theater information on Pochi's hard drive and just boom, he's good to go. I wish the others could see how amazing Jose Kizuka is. But I don't think they'd get it. That's not true. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, I guess I should try. Will you help me, Yuki? Of course. Okay then, Rachel. Let's start with you. Yeah, start with the 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 soulless the soulless personality lacking robot that is Rachel. Rachel has no personality. He has no likes, dislikes. Heck, he's not even a person. He's a robot. He's a remote control robot that Pochi's doing. Pochi just shuts off Rachel. Okay, let me start by telling you the history of Jose Kizuka. Jose Kizuka Theater was established in 19. And and then that's when Hochi turns off the get turns off his controller. And then just everyone's shocked. Hochi just stops playing just stops playing what they believe is a video game console. Okay, that's everyone. Okay, let's move on. Skip that dialogue. Have a moment? We'll have a moment in the next episode because I think now would be a good time to end things off. I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I'll be coming back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. And with that, I'll see you next time. Bye.